In this video, I want to talk about three things that will help you to improve your portfolio projects. Now, you might have the coolest projects out there on your portfolio, but if you don't apply those three things that will help the other person that reads your projects to basically understand it more clearly, to make your code more friendly and more readable, then higher the chances that the person that reads your code will not be as impressed as you think. So in order to fix that, I want to share with you three things that I did personally to put myself in a great position to find a job. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing that I want to talk about is to include documentations about your projects. Now, the reason you want to do this, it is because if you compare it now to a situation like your personal resume that is shared with some person, basically some interviewer that looks to hire you, then the first thing that this person will probably do is to read your self description or self summary, whatever you called it. And the reason for that, it is because our nature behavior is to look for shortcuts to understand what this is about or who is this person right so the same goes for the project as well if the person that reads your projects wants to basically understand what this project is about then the first thing that this person will do is to read the documentation of this project and if you will not include a documentation that explains what this project is about and how to execute it then higher the chances that this person will skip on you so that is why you want to include at least a few lines about this project on your documentations to really give a feeling what this project is about now you might also want to include some instructions how to execute that specific project right so if that is a website that could have been executed locally then be sure to give instructions how to do it because if someone wants to basically look for that program or website then if you will give some instructions how to run it locally it will make easy life for the person that wants to see what the project is about or what its futures and stuff like that so the most common approach to write documentations especially if you write your projects on github will be markdown files so markdown is a special syntax that will help you to write documentations very easily especially if you use github for storing your projects so before i go to the next tip let me use a minute to explain how to get started with writing markdown files All right so let's say that this is our portfolio project now you can see that this doesn't include any proper documentation but you can see down below that there is a recommendation to add a readme with an overview of our project so if we were to press on add a readme then you can see that it automatically leads us to a page where it creates this .md file which is a markdown file now by convention if you will name your markdown files readme in that way then this is going to be automatically visualized in the projects page so that is why leave the name as it is now let's give a short preview how to write a proper markdown file so you can see we have one hashtag before this five app which is the name of our application and this is just designed to write bigger titles now if we were to use something similar but with two hashtags then it will just be responsible to create a secondary title so let me specify that and you can even make smaller titles by including three hashtags so let's say that this will be some instructions of our project and we can also include some point like paragraph so if we were to use dash and then space right after it then this should be responsible to write some points so let's say that this will be my first point and the second one will be our second point and the third one will be our my third point like that now see how i used space between the dash and my sentence now if we were to commit this file now then you can see that this is how the page is being visualized in here and for sure you can write more advanced markdowns by following some documentations how to write more complex markdowns just to make your documentations better all right so the next tip that i want to talk about 
will be to include as much as object oriented code as possible on your project now by that i mean try to write your code as much as with classes so it will make more sense to the person that reads your project now there are several reasons that you want to do this and the first one as i said when you write your code in object oriented it is just going to make an easier life for the person that reads it because everything is very organized you have your classes you have your properties you have your methods and you have your constructor and the code is just going to be much easier to read when you include classes within your projects and one more reason that i can think about it is the fact that i believe that most of the repositories of the companies are written object oriented because it is easier to contribute in object oriented projects and it is easier for larger teams to develop their areas when it is split into different classes and different objects that are written in different python files for example so it will be a great idea to show your skills in that area so the person that interviews you could really be sure that you understand what classes are and what is the difference between static methods to instance methods that you really understand how inheritance works and basically everything that is surrounded around object-oriented programming now i'm not saying that you should convert all your projects now being object-oriented but including at least one project among your portfolio projects that is object oriented is a perfect idea because that is one of the main focused points in each job that you will look for and i can also say myself that when i was searching a job as a devops engineer i got asked about the object oriented principles i was asked to write object oriented programs so you see the object oriented concepts is applied pretty much in multiple jobs so to include one project that is written in object oriented is a perfect idea even if you are searching for a job as a devops software engineer front back it doesn't really matter the object oriented is everywhere and it is just a great idea to include at least one project that is fully written in object oriented all right so the next and the last thing that i want to talk about is to follow some coding guidelines on your projects now the reason you want to do this it is mainly because you want to have your projects friendly and readable to the other person so if you will write your code only for yourself to understand it better in the future then that is just not a great practice because when you write code on your projects you always want to think like someone else also owns this repository now if you will think on that approach along the way then it will be easier for you to always comment important points to comment your workarounds to comment a short explanation about complex logic that you have in your program now this also goes when you style your code so for example you have in python some list of conventions that is named under something that is called pep8 or pep8 whatever you want to call it and this has array of guidelines that really explains how you should write your python code and one of the conventions that you should follow according to pep8 is to not include more than 80 characters in a single line now this is not an easy task to follow tens of instructions along the way when you develop some project so in order to overcome this python comes with a special library that is called black now black is a formatting library that is automatically converting your projects into pep8 styled projects so what that means it means that you can install this black library by using pip install black and then you can apply black formatting on your project and then it will go file by file and will make sure to use auto formatting and change the styling of your project and don't worry it will not affect the logic on your code it will just see where it can apply some changes to turn this project into pip8 project meaning that it is following the guidelines of pip8 
So in order to get starting with black, you can easily go ahead and use a pip install black command. And then let's see how to just apply black formatting on your projects right now. So on the left side, I have a project that I have opened and this is a very basic Django project that I did not apply black formatting or I did not use any pip8 guidelines. Now I want to show you what will happen if I was to pip install black here and as well as right after it say something like the following so i will clean the screen first and then i will say something like the following so it will be python dash m black and then i will use bot to mark the current directory so this command will make sure to go over each file with the .py extension and formatted in pep8 style so if i was to run that then you can see that each file that is a python file is going to be reformatted so you can see how it shows us what files are being reformatted and you can actually see now that this file has been reformatted and you can see that it follows some of the pip8 guidelines here so if we were to full screen now the pycharm then you can see how there are two separated lines between the import lines to the next function now you can also pay attention to this render function here that it uses separated lines to specify its arguments and that is because you never want to exceed 80 characters in a single line according to pep8 conventions so again using black formatting is very very useful and it will just turn your projects more readable which will make an easier life for the person that interviews you all right so if you enjoyed this video and you also want to raise some more points to improve portfolio projects then be sure to write a comment down below so everyone could read it okay so if you like this video please be sure to hit the thumbs up button and if you want to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe to my channel as well i will see you very soon